Hey everybody, what's happening? So today I'd like to talk to you about these ESP32 modules that I got from Banggood. I do need to say that Banggood sent me these modules free of charge. So these modules come with a uh, LoRa transceiver and a 0.96 inch OLED display as well as a LiPo battery charging circuit. So I got these modules uh, to go with my chicken coop automation project that I'm working on and I think the first thing I should probably do is power them up maybe load a RSSI data like sending receiving uh, program and just kind of see what kind of ranges I can get so I'm gonna do that now I've already put this one this is it comes with two modules and I've already put this module into its uh, 3D printed case. I got the 3D printed case off of uh, Thingiverse. They do not come with the case. So I'll go ahead and power up the receiver, or the this is the transmitter module and this is the receiver. So I'll go ahead and power up the transmitter and you'll be able to see uh, it send and receive some packets and the RSSI. Okay, so I've made this program uh, out of an existing example that was just using the uh, serial monitor to display the packets and the RSSI. And then I used another example uh, with a OLED display to kind of merge the two examples together to get this. Uh, I can put it up where you can try this out, but it really, I'm not a very good uh, programmer so it's probably got lots of mistakes so what you've seen there it just I've had it uh, I have it set to reset the count and clear the display when the count gets greater than uh, 100 and that just keeps the numbers from growing too far over onto the screen and kind of leaving artifacts and such <clears throat> so with the two sitting right next to each other, it's got an RSSI of negative 53. I really don't put too much count into what the RSSI number is. I'm really more concerned of what do, what packet do I expect to see here and is it getting that packet. So when I first got these modules, I, uh, I plugged the module in without first plugging in the uh, the antenna, which is a big no-no. You don't want to plug in, power this module without first plugging the antenna into it because you could uh, destroy the LoRa chip. So don't do that. I got away with it somehow. But the program that was loaded on here originally didn't work after I plugged it in without the antenna plugged in. So I had to do some troubleshooting to kind of figure out if I had killed this whole thing or if I only had killed the uh, LoRa module. So if you have a software-defined radio, you can use that to try to find out if it's transmitting. And that worked really well. I was able to find, uh, able to load a program and see that it was transmitting. And then all I had to do was build a program that would display stuff with the OLED. Okay, now we're looking at Banggood and I just wanted to show you where I got these modules at. So you get a two-piece Wemos, TTGO, LoRa32, and then they're in the range of 868 and 915 megahertz. And we'll look more at that later because I found something kind of interesting. Uh, and then they have a OLED display, 0.96 inches, it's kind of blue. I didn't check anything with the Bluetooth, but it probably works. I did 
check out the Wi-Fi and tried a uh, Wi-Fi scanner and that worked and it does come with the antenna that you have to have plugged in so one thing that I kinda wanted to show you here is down at the bottom of the page they show uh, the pinout but the picture of the board is not orientated uh, correctly so down here by the reset buttons yeah so down here by the reset buttons is where you actually find the ground and the 5 volts and 3 volt pinouts so basically everything is just kinda switched around but if you you can see up here where it's all at on the silk screen there so uh, that's not a big deal because you'll probably be looking directly at the board when you're hooking stuff up but that's just a heads up okay so I think uh, now I'm going to go on over to SDR Sharp and we'll look at some of the stuff I found out when I was uh, troubleshooting the modules okay so this is called SDR Sharp and uh, this is a free program you can download and it's using a uh, software defined radio which is just a small USB dongle with an antenna on it and you plug it into your USB port on your computer and you can see frequencies and you can get to FM radio stations and all kinds of good stuff so I've been using this uh, when I was troubleshooting the modules and I thought I might have fried them and so I go ahead and push play so I have the uh, lower module sitting on my desk right now and it's just plugging away four times a second sending a, that packet out that you seen earlier and I have it set at 869 because whenever I was I first uh, started troubleshooting this I noticed there's a lot of noise going on over here I'm not really sure where that's coming from so I just moved over and found another spot that wasn't so noisy and that's 869 so another thing that I discovered that was pretty interesting was uh, just because these things say that they are uh, in the 868 to 915 megahertz range doesn't mean that they don't transmit at oh, where do you go? doesn't mean they won't transmit at the 433 range so I'm gonna go ahead and set that up for uh, 433 and then we'll come right back and I'll show you what I mean okay so what I'm gonna do is I got my uh, transmitter my sender program open here and I'm gonna just go to where I define the band and I'm gonna change it to 433 and then I'm gonna load it and over here somewhere we should see it start transmitting so I'll go ahead and, and I'll let that finish see it's done uploading and it started transmitting over on the 433 uh, waveform so I don't know what that means that it's okay to just keep using it at 433 or if there's some reason why they're set maybe the antennas are different maybe there's something different in the in the chip itself but from what I see it is transmitting on uh, 433 so let's go ahead and I'll try this I'll load the uh, receiver program in the other module and we'll just see if it receives good packets Okay, so I was able to load that on the receiver also and now we are back at the workbench and as you can see it's still transmitting and receiving so they do work on uh, 433 whoa yeah they do work on 433 megahertz as well but I don't know if there's a reason why like right now they're making a weird noise so probably 
should get the ones that are for whatever frequency you plan on using them for. But they do work on 433.